Robert Fatton Jr. as an ambassador, Henry J. and Mrs. Marion H. R. Taylor, political professor at the University of Virginia, and he's written extensively on Haiti. Welcome to the program, Professor. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. We have so much to talk about. I mean, right now there is no government in Haiti, embassies are evacuating, gangs are in control, and people are starving. How do things get so bad? Well, things really got bad uh, after the assassination of Jovenel Moïse, the then president. The gangs existed prior to the assassination, but they have increased their power so much so that now they are essentially an autonomous power unto themselves. And you have essentially two big gangs in au prince the capital city, and they control about 80 to 90 percent of the capital city. The government, as you said, is gone. The prime minister has resigned, though the resignation is supposed to take into effect only after a new government is installed in au prince And the problem now is what kind of government we are going to get. There were discussions and negotiations in Jamaica, and ultimately there was a decision made that there would be a presidential college of seven political parties and different civic associations, and there would be two non-voting members. One of the problem with that agreement is that one of the main group, a group that is supported by a former senator, uh, Maurice Jean-Charles, has decided to withdraw. And that doesn't mean that the whole presidential college is going to fall apart. But the absence of Maurice Jean-Charles is significant because he has advocated a different uh, political dispensation that would be headed by a fellow by the name of Guy Philippe, who himself was actually a convicted uh, drug offender in the United States. Mm. And he just came back from the jails of the United States, he was released in October of last year, and now he's a very important figure, and it seems that he is a power also to be uh, really, to, to take into account. So we have a situation that is in flux, no government. The hope of the international community is that that presidential council of six now, maybe it will change with time, uh, will take power very soon. But then you have the gangs who have promised that they will not accept the solution that comes from the Jamaica agreement. So we are really in a situation where there might be greater confrontation and greater violence. I mean, that's the big question, right? We've got basically outside powers trying to come up with a solution. How legitimate would that be, really? Um, and well, as you say, now the gangs are not accepting it. Yeah, it's a very complicated issue for Haitian politicians. Because Haitian politicians have always claimed that they are sovereign, that they will not accept any agreement coming from the international community. And now we clearly see that the Jamaica uh, agreement is something that was fabricated to a large degree by the international community. And in addition, when you look at the composition of the presidential council, it includes uh, many political parties and associations which were actually uh, connected to previous governments which have contributed to the actual crisis. So there is a problem of legitimacy for any type of solution. And the external meddling into Asian politics have really uh, contributed to further deteriorate uh, the situation at the moment. Uh, Professor, part of the reason Prime Minister Ariel Henry uh, was forced to step down is simply the fact that the gangs are currently working together. There is some unity there. But can and will this last? And is anyone strong enough to stand up against them? That's a big question because the gangs who are united now used to fight against each other. And the fighting between the gangs, as you know, uh, has, has resulted in a catastrophic humanitarian a situation because you have something like 350,000 people who are actually internal refugees in Port au Prince and they are living in camps that have really very little to offer to those poor people. There is virtually no food. There is a situation where all of the hospitals have been closed. So the situation is getting, as time goes by, increasingly catastrophic. 
And I've just heard that the UN has proposed some sort of humanitarian uh, transport of food, etc., to the Dominican Republic. But it's not clear when they will arrive because the international airport is closed, as you know. You bring up perhaps the most important component of this, the people of Haiti. I mean, the UN calls what is unfolding in the capital, Port-au-Prince, a humanitarian catastrophe. Uh, and yet neighboring Dominican Republic continues to deport undocumented Haitian migrants back across the border. Um, how is this justifiable as the situation is so tenuous now? Well, this is really a very uh, 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 troublesome phenomenon. Relations between the Dominican Republic and Haiti have not been that good. And in addition, uh, the Dominicans, what they argue it, is that they can't accept so many Haitians uh, in the Dominican Republic. On the other hand, there is really a catastrophe in the making. And one would have hoped that there would be more of a humane treatment of the Haitians. But this is what we have at the moment. And there is no government in Haiti, really, that is working. So therefore, the population in Haiti and those who have been deported are literally left to their own devices, which is also a catastrophic situation for those poor people. Robert Fatton Jr. is a professor at the University of Virginia. We thank you so much for your time and insight. We'll have to leave it there.